Hi guys, I'm Shmi and today is kind of an example of how hectic it can sometimes be creating these videos. So as you can tell, it's pretty early in the morning. It's just before 7 a.m. Now I got back here to the south of France in the early hours last night. So I've only had a couple of hours sleep and today I'm setting off for a couple of hours drive over towards Marseille in the area of the hills near Paul Ricard for a test drive. So I'm gonna be driving today in the GT4 I've decided to take because later on in this video, there's a very specific road I wanted to drive in that car um, which I've named the P1 and F1 road as it featured in an Evo video earlier in this year with the McLaren P1 and F1 it's a stunning bit of road and I want to drive it later on today in that car but the reason I'm up so early is because I'm first heading over to test drive the new Audi R8 so I've not driven the car yet I'm very very much looking forward to it and they're holding a press event today and it's only maybe two and a half hours drive away so they invited me along and I'm going to head over and take a look at it. So we've got a driveway full of nice cars early in the morning. I've just swapped around these two because um, I needed to take the GT4 out and it was a bit stuck um, with Paul's car, which is way too loud to start up at this time in the morning. Well, like I said, I'm going to be today driving in GT4. Looking forward to it a lot. The McLaren is tucked away in the garage. Um, I hope it's still there. I haven't actually looked. Uh, but let's jump in here. I'm head over for this drive today. Oh, it's actually kind of chilly at this time of the morning. There we go, look, 6.56 a.m. <laughs> 12 degrees. Could be, a, could be colder, I suppose. Um, yeah, let's get <laughs> warmed up, because I've got a long drive ahead of me um, this morning to get over to, uh, going first to the Hotel de Castellet, which is right by Paul Ricard de Castellet, the, the circuit. Uh, so I'm going to drive in the GT4, <laughs> It's going to be a very long day, and as you know, because I'm coming back from Scotland, I've just literally been on a road trip, so even yesterday I was on the road, the two days before I was driving around the Scottish Highlands, and so I haven't exactly had very much rest recently, um, but I'm going to do my best, create some cool videos. You might probably have already seen the R8 review video if I've already put it out. I'm not sure which order all of this is going to be in, but meanwhile, I'm going to get on the road today um, and have some fun. The road here was absolutely brilliant. Because I was driving, of course, I wasn't able to set up a camera and I didn't have one out ready. Um, so I'll have to head back and drive those roads again afterwards, but that was always my plan. As you can see, it's slightly wet actually um, out today because of it being so early in the morning and quite foggy around. But I'm in love with the GT4. Such an amazing car for driving this kind of road. Now though, the sun is out, which is very, very nice. Um, and I'm going to head over and see if I can find the R8s. Now, I don't have very long today, um, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to do the best I can to get these videos shot um, and uploaded. But you can see the line up in front of me, so let's head over. Here we go then. So this is the right-hand drive launch of the new R8 Plus. So we're all UK registered right-hand drive cars, British journalists getting the opportunity to check them out. Awesome of Audi, of course, to invite me along, given that I was just around the corner. Well, relatively, a couple of hours drive. Um, so the new R8 Plus, 610 horsepower, 560 Newton meters, seven-speed S-Tronic gearbox, 1555 kilo curb weight, slightly revised looks. Obviously, plenty more to come. We're outside the fabulous Hotel de Castellet, next to the Paul Ricard circuit, the, the Castellet circuit. Um, this car, Sepang Blue, I think this is the one I'm going to be able to drive. Always make a request for a cheeky blue, of course. So we're taking a really quick whistle stop tour around the outside. I'll obviously shoot some proper videos, so hopefully you've seen those. We've got laser headlights um, with adaptive uh, pointing functionality, of course. Uh, we've got the new sort of shaped grille, much more aggressive. It has this sort of point here around the number plate that sort of um, comes out to that more aggressive sort of stance. Um, you've got the new intakes here under the lights. Of course, this is an all new R8 as opposed to a facelift or anything. Um, a lot of similarities to the Hurricane, Lamborghini Hurricane, of course, sister companies working together to develop them. And we've got new wheels. This car is very nice spec, carbon fiber, pieces all around the outside. Um, it's got a slight change um, in the sort of setup by having this, um, the previous sort of gen, you'll remember, had this big side blade. It was all one piece. Now it's sort of split. Um, and it has on the V10 Plus, which this car is, 
a very nice carbon fiber rear wing as well. Um, above, lots of carbon diffuser as well, and quite nice exhaust tips, sort of dual, very aggressive sort of design shape. And through the vents here, which all to do with cooling, you can see some, uh, some of the exhaust and some of the goodies inside. And there's the engine, all 610 PS of it. Quick look at the interior. Updated, new place to be, still the sort of comforts that you expect from Audi, but now with this vast central display. New sort of button configuration on the steering wheel with drive select, your exhaust setting, the start button here. And you can go through loads of settings on the display. I will talk through all of that in due course. Very futuristic design here with the air conditioning controls. These are mini displays. Um, and of course the seven speed S-Tronic gearbox now in the center. So I will do a full piece actually showing you all around the interior of this car. We've got the sort of dual tone gray interior. Um, but like I did mention, time is very short on me, so I'm going to jump out and take this for a ride. The key is in here, so the first thing we're going to do is start this up. Who doesn't like a cold start, hey? Always sounds good in the morning. Learn everything. Turn the radio off. Is uh, rumbling away. Sounds good, doesn't it? Time for me then to do what I do and shoot some videos and take the new R8 Plus for a test drive. <laughs> I got back then just in time, and all the cars have immediately headed off to be refueled and prepared for a run that's going to be coming in now. I believe it's customers, deposit paying customers, to come down and test the R8s. Sorry for my wobbly camera angles here. I'm delicately balancing photos and cameras and everything. Um, but really, really good short little drive. Um, hopefully I've already put out the full review or full sort of impressions. I literally, literally had about half an hour with that car, um, including getting set up, cameras and the whole lot. So not a big opportunity to drive it, um, just a, a little one, but I'm not gonna complain. Lovely, lovely machine, fantastic piece of kit, 50 grand less than a Hurricane, 40 grand, something like that. That's where my money would be. Um, yeah, really, really good. So everyday driving supercar with immense amounts of power and performance. I'm gonna go and try and find myself a static car to film with as well, but I love the yellow ones. Um, and then uh, film some interior stuff. Before it's back in the GT4, it's a very early morning and it's more or less coming to an end immediately. Let's just check this one heading out. Goodbye yellow R8. Right, let me go see what I can find inside. Walking out the back of the hotel. That's a cool view. Through the four rings, that's another R8 down there and just look at what we're looking at. It's astonishing scenery here, absolutely astonishing. All the R8s have gone. I've edited my video, which is now rendering away on my laptop, and while it's rendering, I thought I'd go and hit this road and do this drive in the GT4 that I have been looking forward to. Basically, the entire time I was in Monaco, I've been trying to find an excuse um, to come over to the Marseille side and try this, and it looks like today is my lucky day, and the weather is absolutely perfect for it for my nice sticky tired Cayman GT4. So I'm gonna put all of this stuff in here, and I'm gonna hope but my laptop doesn't slide around too much. Wedge it there in the back of the seat. Um, leave that rendering while I drive. And really, this is like Cayman GT4 in its natural habitat for the spec I've gone for. If you had the club sport, bucket seats, blah, 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 its natural habitat would be the racetrack. My spec with the slightly more comfortable seats is all about being a good road driving car. So adaptive sports seats with the comfortable side bolstering. Um, but I think this, with the manual gear stick in there, is about to be a lot of fun. So let me go drive, find this road, and then flick my cameras on. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. It's November, and I'm driving a road like this on sticky, sticky tires in a Cayman GT4. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. This road is literally about to be insane. Here goes then a little slice of heaven coming right up. Crackles, manual upshift, 
dry bit of road. I've got to be quite careful because there are some sketchy, slightly slippy bits. And I am obviously on tyres that are best suited to the absolute dry right now. But the lateral grip around corners in this car is the thing I love the most. This is how much it just sticks and stays planted. And then the rev match downshifts when you've got the small sport mode enabled down into first. It's just insane. Lots of stuff on the road here. You've got to be careful. Wind out to the red line. Oh my gosh, this road is going to be insane. Twist it round. Feel the traction doing its thing. I don't want to turn it off just in case. Better not be a hero today. I can see a lot of people have had some sideways fun on this road. There are a serious amount of tyre marks on the, on the corners. It's quite funny actually. Uh, it's clearly been well used for the purpose. I don't even know what this corner, this part of the road is called. It's the part of the D2, just near Marseille. To me, it's P1 F1 road because that's the first time I saw it in the Evo video. Henry Catchpole driving the two matching cars in the same colours, both the P1 and the F1. That just must have been the most amazing day ever. I mean, F1 is the top of my bucket list. I don't know if I'll ever get an opportunity to drive one, but this car on this road is a very, very good combination. It's just the right amount of agility, not too much power, so I can use it out of the corners. Oh wow, oh wow, right, I'm going to shut up and just drive for a bit. to a movie set. Um, I hope I didn't film anything I wasn't supposed to, but who knows. hotel and what an amazing adventure those roads are absolutely brilliant and that is one heck of a car to be driving it in gosh today has been a pretty good day coming and testing in the new r8 plus and then getting to enjoy my gt4 and roads like that i did actually end up on a single track road for parts of the way back um, which was slightly chaotic i think i've kind of lost my voice a bit with excitement right now um, but that was so much fun so, so, so much fun. I'm sorry about the uh, hedge cutter or whatever's going on behind that's making loud noises. Can't do very much about that, but yeah, I got a big smile on my face. I'm going to go inside, grab some internet for a little bit, and then I'll get on the road back over towards Monaco. What a day. Nothing desperately exciting to report about then on the drive back home, but what a day it has been driving the new R8 Plus and then driving the Cayman GT4 on some unbelievable roads. Since then, it's basically just been motorway for a couple of hours, coming back here to the wonderful location in the hills above the Mediterranean and Monaco. Well, technically Monaco is just around to the left, but it's so beautiful up here. FF parked here, McLaren's in the garage. Brilliant day though. I, 
I just love this thing, you know. This car, well, it's just one Evo car of the year, I've got to say. First place came to this. Four out of the eight journalists gave it first place. The LT came second. Another four of the eight gave the LT first place, but one person didn't give the LT second, whereas everyone else gave the GT4 second. So they were very, very close. 84 points, 82 points above the GT3 RS coming in third place. Um, but man, I'm, I'm just absolutely in love with this car. I'm so, so happy with it. it like everything about it is perfect. Um, I might do some sort of minor cosmetic stuff. I was thinking about putting um, a badge maybe on the wing, a sticker, um, a bit like the Porsche official sticker. Maybe some little M plates, maybe a little Shmi logo on here or something. I don't know. Um, maybe even make the side blades a different color to go with the McLaren where I have different colored um, blades. But yeah, it's been a good day. I think is the way to describe today. It has been a very, very good day. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna, well, I'm gonna rest up because as I told you this morning, I did not sleep very much. So I'm pretty much only surviving right now on an energy drink. Um, without that, I'd be in trouble. So I'm gonna go in, get some videos edited and get myself to sleep. So thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe, check out all the other videos and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers. Hi Nick, hello, how are you? Hello, welcome. Thank you very much. Hi, nice to see you. Uh, pretty excited about today. Well, I can see the car over there. Let's go straight inside.